every year, it's the same thing. Billboard's asking, got your flu shot yet? Then come COVID boosters, RSV shots, and the vaccine talk everywhere. Whether that be on the news, in your group chats, at the pharmacy checkout, you name it. But with all that buzz, most of us still wonder, what do vaccines actually do? Well, you might imagine that vaccines act like a locked door, shutting the virus out just in time before it can get in and begin infecting cells. Well, that's not exactly how they work. Let's clear things up. Vaccines don't fight the virus directly. Instead, they train your immune system to recognize and stop the virus before it causes serious trouble. Your immune system is your body's biological defense system. It's a complex network of cells, tissues, and organs that work together to protect you from pathogens. So, things like viruses, bacteria, and other harmful invaders. Moving on, here are two main parts of the immune system. The innate immune system, which responds quickly but non-specifically, and the adaptive immune system, which learns to recognize and remember specific threats. Here on the left side of the split screen is the innate immune system your body's first line of defense against germs. These purple cells you see here are called macrophages. They're a type of white blood cell that plays a crucial role in protecting you by engulfing and digesting harmful invaders through a process known as phagocytosis. After destroying the invader, the macrophage releases a cytokine, a tiny chemical signal that alerts and activates other immune cells to join the fight. But where does the word macrophage actually come from? A Russian scientist named Ilya Mechnikov coined the term in 1882. It actually comes from Greek, so macro meaning big, and phage meaning eat. So macrophages literally mean big eater, and that's exactly what they do to keep you safe. Let's move on to the next line of defense, your adaptive immune system. Unlike the innate response, this one's highly specialized. It takes a little longer, but it's much more precise. Specialized cells called B cells begin analyzing the virus, looking for ways to stop it. Once they've locked onto the invader, they start producing antibodies tiny Y-shaped proteins that are custom-built to target the virus. Now, let's move from the cellular level to the molecular level. Each arm of the Y is made of two parts, a heavy chain and a light chain. Together, they form the antigen-binding site which sticks to the virus. They're highly specific, like a key fitting a lock. That tip is part of the variable region, which changes to match different invaders. The bottom of the Y is called the constant region. It doesn't stick to the virus, but instead, it acts like a flag that immune cells like macrophages can recognize. So antibodies don't destroy viruses directly. The antigen binding site tags the virus, and the constant region acts as a signal to other immune cells to come clean it up. But B cells aren't working alone. Another key player in the adaptive immune system is the T cell. And unlike B cells, T cells don't release antibodies. When a virus enters the body, dendritic cells, a type of immune cell grabs pieces of it called antigens. They carry those antigens to the lymph nodes where they show them off to T cells. Your body has millions of T cells, each with a different receptor. Most won't match, but a few will recognize the virus. When a match happens, that T cell gets activated. It then multiplies quickly, making an army of T cells specialized to fight that virus. Some of them turn into killer T cells. They find and destroy infected cells. Others turn into helper T cells. They help other immune cells like B cells do their job better. After the infection is gone, some of those T cells stay behind as memory T cells, so that if the virus comes back, these memory cells respond faster and stronger. So now you know how your immune system fights off a virus, with personal antibodies, killer T cells, and memory that lasts. But what if your body could learn all of that without getting sick in the first place? That's exactly what vaccines do. Vaccines give your immune system a preview of the virus. It contains a weakened, inactivated, or just a small piece of the virus, enough to train your immune system without causing illness. So when the real virus shows up later, your immune system already knows what to do. That's why vaccines are so effective. They're like giving your immune system a head start. But not all vaccines work in the same way. In fact, there are a few different types, each training your immune system in a slightly different way. First, mRNA vaccines give your cells instructions to make a harmless piece of the virus called the spike protein. Your immune system learns to fight it and remembers it for the next time. Inactivated vaccines are viruses that have been killed or disabled. They can't cause illness, but your immune system can still recognize and learn from them. Viral vector vaccines use a harmless virus to deliver instructions, like a delivery truck. Your cells make a harmless piece of the virus so your immune system can learn to fight it. When enough people are vaccinated, the virus can't spread as easily, even to those who aren't protected. This is called herd immunity, and that's why getting vaccinated matters not just for you, but for your whole community.